So the setup of the Ramsey model is going to be more complicated than the setup of the solo model. And that's because we have different types of agents making decisions. We have prices that we didn't care about in the solo model. Um, so let's jump in. Two types of agents in the economy. We have households that are going to decide. I'm going to try to change this to blue rather than red. When I, when I write in red, I feel like I'm marking an exam. So we have households, one type of agent, and we have firms that are another type of agent in the model. They're going to be making different decisions. We're going to assume that there's H identical households in the economy forever. In other words, the number of households in the economy does not change. However, the size of each household is going to grow at rate N. So the labor force is going to keep growing at rate N, but the supply of households is constant. So all that's happening in this model is that households are getting bigger and bigger over time. And this seems like kind of a weird decision. Um, and I think maybe the first time I taught this course, I was also a bit confused about why they would make this assumption that we have the labor supply growing, but the number of households is staying fixed. I mean, it doesn't seem to reflect very well the way that I think of society, you know, growing in the real world. Um, if anything, households are getting smaller over time. The reason that we do this is actually a bit of a shortcut or a trick. Um, and the trick is that at time zero, only some people exist, right? The, the number of people in the economy is growing over time. So when we're thinking about the consumption of future people, how should people at time zero value that future consumption? Okay, so if people were purely individualistic, then even though the labor supply is growing, then maybe people just don't care about future generations. So, you know, that's going to give us a very different sort of problem. What we're doing instead is we're assuming that we have these dynasties, these households, and the households are going to care about all of the household members, including those that aren't born yet, you know, their children's children. They might discount. They might care about them less than they care about themselves, or at least they might act that way, but um, they'll still care about them a little bit. Okay, so um, it's this trick to be able to sort of value the consumption of future people starting at time zero. Um, you know, that is an unrealistic assumption, the way that households are expanding and then the people who are originally in the household care about their distant ancestors, uh, distant descendants, um, because they're part of the same family line. It seems kind of awkward, and I agree it's awkward. In the next class, we're going to cover the overlapping generations model, which is sort of taking the diametrically opposite assumption and assuming that people only care about themselves and the next generation, they can go to hell. Who cares about them? Uh, but, you know, that's going to change a little bit of the way that people behave. And it's going to, again, make the model a little bit more complicated or a little bit different than the model we're learning about today. So again, this is a shortcut to help us think about how people at time zero are going to value the consumption of people that don't exist at time zero. Okay. We're going to assume that each member of the household supplies one unit of labor, regardless of the wage. Okay. So this is also going to be something that may not be totally realistic. Of course, if wages are higher, then we expect people to work more hours. But um, in this model, we want to focus on capital, not labor supply. Uh, so uh, we're going to just make this somewhat stark assumption that the labor supply is totally inelastic. I may have said in, in an earlier class that there's something to this assumption in the sense that this does in some ways at first pass reflect something about the real world, which is that people tend to work full-time regardless of the wage. So labor supply actually is relatively inelastic to 
the wage. It's not totally inelastic, but it's relatively inelastic. If the wage changes, labor supply doesn't change as much as you might think. Okay. We're going to assume that the households are going to own capital. They're going to rent capital to firms um, and that there's no depreciation. So no depreciation is not an important part of the model. It's just something that where, you know, it's like we could put in a ton of bells and whistles, but it wouldn't change the underlying message. Here's a simplification. We're just doing it because it doesn't change anything and it's going to make, you know, it's going to give us one less thing to keep track of as we develop the model. Um, as for the other one, this is a standard assumption in macro models that the households own capital and then rent it to firms. Um, it's a somewhat unusual assumption because often in the real world, firms own their own capital, right? The firm owns the building, the factory that it's operating in, or the office building, or the printer, or the computers. You know, these are owned by the firms, not by the household. Um, we're not going to cover it this year, but in past years, sometimes I cover a chapter in the course that's about capital and investment. It's in the textbook. And you can check it out if you're interested. The idea behind that chapter actually is to show that it doesn't really matter whether you think about households as renting the capital to the firms or the firms as owning the capital um, with what they call some user cost of holding on to the capital. Um, it's going to give us very similar results. And it turns out that this one is just somewhat easier to work with. Um, so this is not an important assumption. This is a... Uh, Again, a simplification. Simply, uh, it's it's easier to work with mathematically, but it doesn't make a big difference uh, which side you put the ownership on. Okay, um, let's see here. Yeah, firms are going to have they're going to produce output. They're going to use labor and capital. Production function is going to you'll see in a slide or two that it's going to look very similar to the solar growth model. We're going to assume that markets are competitive. So what does that mean? It means that both households and firms are going to take the prices in the economy as given. So what are the prices? The prices are the rental rate of capital or the interest rate, They're very similar, rental rate of capital, and then the wage. Okay. And then there's also implicitly a price of output, which we're going to normalize to one. So there are those three prices, okay? Um, again, what does it mean that they're price takers? The firms aren't big enough to think, well, we could influence the price by restricting our supply. You know, the firms are small enough that they think there's nothing we can do to change the price, and the households are small enough to think there's nothing we can do to affect the, uh, the prices. Otherwise, there would be market power, we'd have a monopoly problem, we'd have some sort of you know, we'd have, we'd have some other calculations to make. Um, and in fact, in later chapters, we are going to assume that there's monopoly power among firms, but not yet. Okay. So you can see there's all kinds of extra ingredients we could throw in here. We have to make some assumptions and we're making the economy relatively simple so that we can, we can solve these models. Okay. Finally, and uh, this won't actually be important in equilibrium, but firms are owned by the households. So any profits that the firms generate are going to be remitted back to the households. Um, but since we have perfect camp competition, markets are competitive, uh, there's not going to be any profits. Firms are not going to make profits in this model. There's no market power, um, which means that we don't really have to worry about where the profits go. I think before I go into the preferences of the households, I'm going to put that in a new video.